All right, guys, it's shaky camera time, which of course means you're watching another behind the scenes T-Rex vlog, which uh, this one is gonna be about our new conference table. Lots of businesses have conference tables, but uh, we have one. It's got a fossil of a dinosaur inside. Who knew that fossils of juvenile tyrannosaurs would be so easy to discover? But it really just takes the right CNC settings. And I wanna show you how we made it. Uh, but the first step, the most important step, is you gotta get the right glue. Glue that will work on foam, not eat into it, and uh, never come apart. And while that perfect glue dries, we're gonna go work on the 3D model, which is basically just my stock T-Rex skeleton uh, with some ground underneath him, and I'll adjust it so it looks like he's being chipped out of the rock. And then throw it into a spire where we'll generate the cut path. Then we just put the foam on the machine. All right, so the glue failed. We re-glued it with different glue onto the plywood. And uh, we'll be starting pretty soon here. Trying to set up this. And I'll security camera over here so that it can see the machine and I can check in on it from home. Now this thing is cutting foam at three inches per second. Uh, uh, custom four inch bits doing nice. Up there on the computer screen, we've got uh, another, oh, about another million lines of code to go. How many lines of code are there? About two million. Two million? Yeah. All right, so in 10 minutes, we have cut a little more than one inch. So this whole thing should take about 16 hours, but it's actually gonna slow down. Once it gets to the skull and is going up and down, that'll slow it down. So I'm guessing about 18 hours, 18 hours to cut this out. That's why we're doing it over the weekend. The only problem I can see is if I uh, forget to move these weights before I go home. Okay, so I don't quite trust my glue. So we're gonna do these clamps right here. This stuff is gonna be everywhere on Monday. Ugh. We're four hours into the cut. And I've been watching the security camera footage. So obviously the dust here on the workpiece is no problem, but uh, I am slightly concerned about the dust getting on the spindle and getting into the cooling fan. That's no good. This is not a great problem to solve at 10.30 on a Friday night all by myself, but we'll see what we can do. Okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I want to attach it because I don't really want to get all of this. <laughs> all right, so there's a little bit of vacuum, and then over here is a little bit of fan. That should keep the dust off of anything that it shouldn't be on. Hopefully not too much of it gets on everything else. Ah, time to head back home. It's done! 
So I was at the range all day while this thing cut, and now Saturday afternoon, it is finished. There's a few parts that have to be glued back on. The fun part is gonna be cleaning this up, adding detail, carving on it before we paint it. Uh, but before we can do that, we gotta clean up the floor. We added some rock extensions and did a little bit of hand carving with the Dremel. Get some undercuts for our bones. Uh, and then also did a little bit of sculpting of a few features with a soldering iron. Technically a wood burning kit would have worked better, but the fumes would have been just as bad. Now when I was a kid, I used to read books about the Stan Winston artist who made the Jurassic Park dinosaurs. And in addition to being great artists, they were also great engineers. They knew exactly what paints and glues uh, to use for every step of the process. Now obviously, I don't. So before we start messing with that giant foam that took so long to carve, we wanted to do some tests with different materials, different kinds of paint to see what they actually did. This is a concrete coating that looks very much like stone, but it doesn't look very much like fossilized bone. Here are some tests with different spray paints that actually dissolved and uh, ate into the foam a little bit, which was a, a cool result in some places, but not so good in others. And uh, it has like six or eight paint tests stacked on top of uh, the skull at this point. And then this is another two or three different paint tests on top of each other. And uh, just experimenting with how shiny it should actually be. Um, I know we're going to keep testing on the, the full size thing, but some of these little tests are helpful. They show us stuff that we don't want to do with the real thing. This is an automotive underbody spray. It gives an interesting texture. Oh, you want to run the camera? Um, Daddy, mm -hmm. it's just, it, I can't, it isn't so good when you for some reason, this is not really working. Is that fun? Yeah. We actually ended up adding a fair amount of air dry clay to the top of our sculpture. Used it to build up certain areas, but also to give a different texture to the teeth and to the claws. And it gave us a cracking effect. It was almost exactly what we were looking for. Especially once it's been hit with a little bit of black enamel paint. Did a little more rock sculpting with joint compound. And then started covering up the remaining foam with our concrete skim coat. We mixed a little bit of sand and paint in to give it the sedimentary rock look that we were going for. The concrete could even be worked like stone after it dried. We did a bunch more paint experiments at the last minute. Just touch up and polish and texture and so on. Getting the differences between stone and bone to work just right. Then it was time to carry the stone slab into the conference room. We had a friend make us a steel table, five feet by 10 feet with a seven inch compartment for the fossil. And I put two different colors of LED lights around the edges. So here's the final product. 
with the T-Rex under glass. So it uh, took a little longer than I had planned just because so many of the processes were actually experiments. Uh, if I were gonna do it again next time, I think I'd carve everything out of the foam, paint everything black with acrylic paint, put clay on everything so that there's less carving, uh, then do, you know, a little touch up polish paint and then the concrete on top. Uh, if I were to do it again, which at first I didn't want to, but turned out so nicely, maybe we'll do another. So that is the end of the project, just in time for leader meetings tomorrow. And that's the end of the vlog. Thanks so much for watching. And if you want more behind the scenes content, you should subscribe. Uh, this YouTube channel has some behind the scenes content, but you should also sign up for our newsletter at trex-arms.com. Uh, there's a bunch more behind the scenes stuff that goes up there. So hopefully we'll see you there and you can let us know what the next dinosaur fossil is going to be. I'm kind of talking myself into making another. Uh, I think it'll be super easy, barely an inconvenience. It's gonna be very distracting looking at this in the meetings and being like, why didn't I fix that when I had the chance? <laughs>